Welcome all. We are ready to kick off today's event. Please turn your attention to the front of the auditorium and welcome the Carroll Center for the Blind President and CEO, Greg Donnelly. Thank you for the warm welcome, everyone. Good afternoon, and welcome to today's Stargard Summit. My name, what a community we have here and uh, remote across the world. But my name is Greg Donnelly. I'm president and CEO of the Carroll Center for the Blind. The Carroll Center for the Blind has a rich and very profound 88-year history serving the blind and vision impaired of all ages and all stages of vision loss. And what we've done best is served relentlessly for generations. Lives are transformed every day, whether on our beautiful campus, in the schools of all the school children we serve of all ages, college campuses, universities, all the workplaces we go to support vocational dreams and and goals, um, all the communities across the state, New England and beyond, uh, and, and meeting you know, everyone where they are as we have such greater access to remote as demonstrated by today. Our clients come from all across the United States and internationally due to the life-changing quality outcomes and the professionally trained staff that we have here at the Carroll Center that have delivered outstanding results for generations. The Carroll Center was the nation's first comprehensive residential rehabilitation center for newly blinded civilians in the early 50s. And the first community ability program in the world to teach safe travel and navigation skills. I am so honored and proud to lead this amazing, mission-driven, impactful organization, and I feel so lucky to be surrounded by a team of professionals at all levels that support me in the role so that we can reach out to those that are in greatest need of our services and supports. But we are not the only organization changing lives and working to serve those experiencing vision loss. Our summit partners, Foundation Fighting Blindness, Prevent Blindness, and The Blind Life also work tires tirelessly to improve the lives of individuals who are blind or visually impaired. Whether by helping to advance early detection and equitable access to care, advocating for public policy, how important that is, demystifying assistive devices and technologies that emerge constantly, offering tips for daily living and independence, or driving research that will lead to preventions, treatments, and very hopeful cures. Together, we are pioneering state-of-the-art services and treatments for inherited retinal diseases like Stargard's. I am so grateful to these wonderful organizations that joined us today, and especially to our event sponsor, Alkeus Pharmaceuticals, for not only partnering with the Carroll Center and helping to make this event such a success, but for demonstrating its tremendous promise and advancement of treatments for degenerative eye diseases, world changing. Remember, every impactful gathering and event like today can make a difference here in the regions where you live beyond now, the future. So we have so much work ahead of us, so much reach before us, and together we can make an enormous difference. We together, you know, believing in the power of today's collaboration, will just journey on and on. And you'll see from the panelists, the discussions, and the events as, as the summit program um, goes forward today, how impactful we can be through research, education, learning about outcomes, and learning about each other and making new connections. 
And so when I talked about privilege, honor, and collaborations, I can't think of a better individual that represents these attributes than our event MC, Martha Steele. Martha has Usher syndrome and is now totally blind. But that hardly stops her as valued member of the board of directors for both the Carroll Center for the Blind and the Foundation Fighting Blindness. Martha has been an invaluable member of the Stargardt Summit Planning Committee, helping to secure many of the panelists you will hear from today in marketing the event through her vast network. And when I say vast, I mean vast, <laughs> endless. And today it will be even bigger. So please give a warm welcome to Martha, who is going to kick off this fantastic summer program, summit program for us today. Thank you so much, Martha. All I can say is, wow. <laughs> you are 1,500 people strong here today. You come from 46 of 50 U.S. states, the District of Columbia, Puerto Rico, and 41 countries across the globe, spanning every continent except one, I'll bet you can guess it, Antarctica. <laughs> I don't think penguins have Stargardt. There are around 700 of you who have Stargardt present either in person or on Zoom, and another 450 or so who are family members or close friends. It's astonishing. To our knowledge, this is the first event of this kind to be held in the United States of the Stargardt community, similar to what Stargardt's Connected, based in the United Kingdom, has done for several years. Today is February 29. It is Rare Disease Day, an appropriate day for us to hold an event like this for Stargardt disease, which is a rare or orphan disease. About 30,000 Americans are affected by Stargardt, and somewhere around 1.2 million across the globe are affected by Stargardt. It is also, February is also Low Vision Awareness Month. And that raises awareness for visual impairments that cannot be corrected with glasses, treatment, surgery, or other means. To summarize the event today, before we get started, we're going to start with a terrific keynote speaker. That will be followed by our first panel of individuals who have Stargardt who are going to share their experiences and stories. After that, there will be a short video of an exciting new film about women with Stargardt. Following that will be a panel of experts who will give us the latest updates on research. Somewhere around 3.10 or so, we will have a 15-minute break. After that, we will have a third panel on accessibility and adaptive living skills. I will give a few closing remarks and then instructions for the rest of the afternoon that include Q&A availability on the Zoom call, as well as for the in-person attendees, the opportunity to get together in a couple of breakouts with people who have Stargardt, as well as those who support them. A few ground rules. Those of you who are on Zoom will be on mute. You will be able to ask questions or provide comments by using the Q&A and chat feature on the Zoom. If you are using a screen reader, you can press the Alt key plus the letter H as in hotel, type in your question, and press Enter. All questions and comments are going to go to the host only. And I do ask throughout the afternoon, if anybody asks questions, try to keep your questions as short as possible so we can get to answer as many questions as we can. 
I also want to remind everybody to please turn off your cell phones or at least put them on the vibrate mode. And finally, this event is being recorded from start to finish and a recording will be made available to all participants at a later date. Okay, you don't need to talk, listen to me. The next person, I am absolutely thrilled to have Bradford Manning come here in person from Florida. I believe he came up from Florida, Brad, and give a keynote address. Brad and his brother Brian are on a mission to cure blindness. They were diagnosed with Stargardt at a young age and to fight back. They left their professional careers and formed a new company, a charitable clothing company called Two Blind Brothers. The company donates 100% of its profits to help fund research on Stargardt and other blinding diseases. And the company focus in terms of its clothing line is quality, comfort, and a sense of touch. Before Brad starts his speech, we're going to run a very short video about Two Blind Brothers. And after that, we welcome Brad Manning. So roll the video. Audio description provided by the younger brother of the Two Blind Brothers, Brian Manning. The following is a short video of highlights from news clips and events featuring Brad and Brian Manning, founders of Two Blind Brothers, a charitable clothing brand. The only important visual is that the younger brother, Brian, is very physically attractive. Although Brad and Brian have the same genetics as it relates to Stargardt's disease, Brad did not inherit Brian's good looks. In fact, it's painful to look at Brad for too long. Thankfully, it's a short video. Please enjoy. P.S. Good luck with the speech, big brother. Love your younger brother, Brian. Two blind brothers. Two blind brothers. Two blind brothers. They're grabbing the spotlight on a national level. Two brothers who were diagnosed with an eye disease that causes blindness over time. They were diagnosed with Stargardt's disease, leaving patients with only their peripheral vision. Brother Brad and Brian Manning have taken their stories and their experiences and turned them into a mission to cure blindness through their luxury clothing brand. They have a hot clothing brand and famous fans, but these fashion mogul brothers aren't keeping a dime of the profit. They donate 100% to offset the cost of the research and medical advancement. You're kind of celebrities to me because I've now gotten hooked on TikTok. Two blind brothers. We ran into organizations like Industries for the Blind. They employ 70% visually impaired workers to do all of the cut and sew manufacturing. What's great about it is the clothing is soft, it is great, and all of the money is going towards finding a cure. We're literally about to see people who were given a diagnosis of blindness who will now be able to be treated and regain eyesight. When you accomplish a goal, it doesn't matter how big or how small, you are shaping the world around you. Vision impairment has given more to us than it's taken away. Anybody want a shirt? Your greatest challenge is your greatest gift. Thank you guys. This is a very special day. This is the first time that I get to hold a microphone without my younger brother next to me. I feel like I got a weight vest off. I hope I don't pull any muscles up here. But, um, you know, it's another special day, which is that this is the largest gathering of Stargardt's people, I think, that's ever occurred. And um, I thought I'd just tell my personal story and talk about what today sort of means to me. A lot of this is going to sound very familiar. So when I was five years old, I failed the kindergarten eye chart, which started this two-year hunt to figure out what had happened to my eyesight. And this is 30-plus years ago. So after so many doctors and so many ideas, some very bad ideas. I went into this one office. They, at that time, they didn't have gene testing. They did a phalangioangiogram where they dye your blood. They could see the scar tissue. And I was seven at this time. The doctor walks out and says to my mom that I have Stargardt's disease. 
juvenile form of macular degeneration, you're gonna lose your center vision over time. We don't know how fast, how dramatic. Um, go home, teach them Braille, give them a magnifier and best of luck because there's no cure. And I remember after that, that really meant nothing to me as a seven-year-old. I didn't know what that meant. And we're sitting in the car and my mom is staring at the steering wheel. And I'm watching her and she just says, F this. She goes, let's go to Friendly's and get some ice cream. And actually as an aside, that's what I thought F this meant for a long time. <laughs> so we go to Friendly's, we get, this, we get a Sunday, we go to Blockbuster. I rent the movie Air Bud the golden retriever that plays for the high school basketball team. I thought it was pure documentary. i loving every second of it. I thought it was the greatest day of my entire life. And then five years later, my younger brother, Brian, had the same effing experience with the same effing doctor, except he got Air Bud 2 golden receiver. Uh, the dog is, inc is an incredible athlete, but we, we, ha we had what I believe every person with Stargardt's in this room probably has, which we had strong parents. And our mom and dad gave us the greatest gift at that time. They said, look, you know, everybody in life has challenges. Some of them are labeled in different ways. This eye condition happens to be yours, and it's not going to dictate your life. But... You know, and as many in this peop people in this room will know, that it's a little e it's easier said than done at times. On my first day of first grade, my mom had told me, you know, if you can't see something on the board, get up and just go to the board to see it. You know, it's like that's simple enough. That the moment comes, I can't see what's on the board. I go up to see it, but when I turn around, you know, I felt all the eyes of the class on me. And I, I remember that like icky feeling of feeling different. And then after sitting down, knowing I was going to have to get up and do it again. And later that day, a kid in the class comes up and says, can you see? And I defensively say yes. And he goes, well, how many fingers am I holding up? You know? it, and, I, and I know that everyone in here at Stargardt's know this. Even though you can't see the fingers, you know how many fingers they're actually holding up. It's always two for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> but, you know, that was, a, that was a one tough moment. And, you know, my brother, one of my brother's really tough moments is on his first day of high school. He really didn't want to be the blind kid. So he had this grand idea that he was actually going to sit in the very back of the room and just pretend to be fully sighted just for whatever that meant to him as a ninth grader going to a new school. And the teacher calls on him. Dr. Kelly calls on Brian and says, um, Brian, we're doing a problem up here. Can you, um, can you do this problem? And, you know, Brian couldn't see it. So like many of us learn, he, he had a few tricks to try to get somebody to, to tell him what it says. Oh, what, what exactly do you want me to do, Dr. Kelly? You know, he points, just this. He goes, um, I, uh, w you know, I don't, I don't know how. You know, maybe, maybe you can help me with it, you know, after class. And he says, Brian, it's simple division. He goes, just do the problem. And Brian did that because at, he, at that time, he would rather be dumb than be blind. And it came out in the worst way possible. And as he was defeated with his head falling on his desk, he realized in that moment that the worst impairment he could actually give himself is being inauthentic. And that in that really tough moment, he learned a valuable lesson that you have to own who you are because there is no hiding. And with hard-fought lessons and, you know, some good luck, we end up in New York City together after, after college. And we're walking around and we're shopping one day and we're talking about something that really inspired us. It was actually the story 
of one of the early clinical trial patients for what is now Luxterna, the story of Yannick Douay, a kid who was blind reading Braille who got this gene therapy and could then read print. And how that started with discovering the gene in the mid-90s and we were close with the Foundation Fighting Blindness and a grant they had made back then. And, and now this looked like it could become a therapy that would cure this form of blindness. So we're walking around talking about this and then we end up walking into a store and I, you know, Stargirl says you can lose the people with you quite easily. I lose Brian everywhere we go, although he has a very visually impaired friendly head size. So it's easy to, to, to spot him from far away. He's not here to defend himself, so I might as well, you know. Um, and so we walk, coincidentally, 30 minutes later, we walk out of the store with the exact same shirt. Total coincidence. We start talking about that. You know, maybe when you can't see the sizes, the prices, the labels that well, you grab something, figure out if you love the way it feels. And we thought, what if, what if there's something to this? You know, it's hard to make sort of research feel tangible. What if we started a brand with two simple missions, making the softest clothing we possibly could and try to help find that next big breakthrough for blindness by donating 100% of the profits. And that's when we came up with the idea for two blind brothers. And we had no idea you know, what we were doing. We were lucky we had a lot of friends in New York City that knew something about you know, fashion. And Brian and I are trying to like go to Starbucks and sift through fabric books to find super soft fabrics. And, you know, and Brian didn't know how to sew, so I, he was pretty much useless on the entire project. <laughs> but one thing that did help us a lot is we had a friend, actually some people have met him, um, named Peter, who was a videographer. And he filmed our story. And we just talked about why we were doing this. We had never been on camera or talked about our story before. He captured something great about it, and we put it out on social media, and we started to get all this great attention. We started to get some news organizations reaching out, and you saw some of the big highlights there. Obviously, you know, this was a nights and weekends project, and then we get you know, the call to do the Ellen DeGeneres show. That was a, a really crazy moment. The, the, the really tough part about that for us personally was were we comfortable personally label, labeling ourselves two blind brothers on national media in a way that every person I'd ever date <laughs> could, could see, that any employer I would ever have, you know, any in-law of anyone that I would date would see. I mean, were we comfortable with that label? And I think that's an interesting thing that's kind of unique to the Stargardt's community is oftentimes you can keep it pretty covert, you know, and, and how you disclose that is a tricky situation. So, you know, we just decided, look, we were, we'd fought all the battles. We've been called everywhere and we've come out the other side. You know, we, we really had nothing to lose. And it was a very special moment I'll, I'll never forget. And it created this great swell and great adventure for Two Blind Brothers. And we got to do all these special things. And you saw some of them there. We got to meet, like, great personal heroes of ours and, um, you know, do cool media. But one that we teased a little bit there is we, we got a message from none other than gangster rapper slash actor on Law and Order, Ice-T. And I, I actually have his message here. I was going to try to play this in the mic so you could hear what we, what we heard when we opened up our email and saw the message from Ice-T here. So let me see if this will play. Bradford and Brian, two blind brothers. Uh, they run a clothing program that gives all profits to research for blindness. Hunt them down, Google them because they're doing something that's positive, all right? Ice-T has your back. <laughs> so, you know, I was like, we might, this is a lot of fun. This is cool. No. Um, and, you know, we had this original mission around helping cure blindness, making soft clothing, and then like a ton of bricks, we were actually missing the most important thing. We started to hear from people. You know, we started to hear from people who were connected to all types of 
different forms of blindness, and they would write in on our customer service line, and we got this message, this kid wrote, hey, um, um, I saw you on social media, I'm 19 years old, I'm in college, uh, my name's John, um, and I've been sleeping a lot. You know, you think, okay, college kid, that's not that surprising. But the next thing he wrote changed our perspective on this project forever. He said, I've been, I, I'm, I was diagnosed with retinitis pigmentosa, and I've been sleeping a lot because I'd rather be asleep where I dream in 2020 vision than awake knowing I'm losing my eyesight. It was really hard to listen to. And there was one other story that we heard that was super tough for us to hear. I'm going to just share with you because it really did inspire us in a way that I think is important for this room to hear. It was the story of a, of a grandmother, an 80-year-old woman who was diagnosed with adult macular de degeneration. She was worried about spending the next, her final decade or two of life, you know, being dependent on her family. So she gets on the internet, she starts trying to research, she finds some sort of clinic down in Florida that said they could probably re reverse her condition. And so she has to like crowdfund from her friends and family and raise this money. And she, she spends up to go down there and do it. But this was a rogue doctor trying to do something way out of line, taking advantage of people's vulnerability. She gets this, whatever this treatment was, and she and a few other people end up going completely blind three months later. And you think about how desperate somebody must feel, how much they fear losing their eyesight for them to be in that situation. It is unacceptable. That is not fair that people today can feel that way. And so that brings me to this room. This is the largest gathering of people who have Stargardt's disease. And there's a reason we're all here. And it's because the whole conversation is changing. We are living in a medical revolution and we're living in a technology revolution. And the people in here, because I, I know it because you're here, you guys are pioneers. You're interested, you're engaged, you're active. You want a front row seat to this, and not just because you have bad eyesight. You, this is a very, this may be the last generation out of 100,000 years or whatever of human history where people suffer from Stargardt's disease. This is a, Stargardt's is a gateway to this biotech revolution for a variety of ways we'll hear from the science folks. And so it's exciting, but I don't want us all to forget the lessons that we've learned from this community and, and, and from this. You know, people say, can't imagine any good coming from something like a diagnosis from Stargardt's disease. You know, I look at my own life, you know, learning, uh, learning how to stand in front of that class when I was a kid, learning how to be authentic even though there's something about you, 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 you you're struggling with giving me the gift of this project with my brother, getting to be here today. So I think history is going to look back on this moment. It's going to be very special, and I'm just glad I got to share that with you today. Thanks. Thank you, Brad. Thank, Thank you. you so much. That's great. That's great. Uh, wonderful, Brad. Uh, really hits to the heart, too. Um, what everyone goes through is Stargard is not unique to Stargard. I felt quite a few things in your stories that I remember experiencing myself. So, but one of the things that uh, is an advantage sometimes to being totally blind and not being able to see people is that I can imagine whatever I want about how someone looks. So I'm telling you, Brad, you're more handsome than Brian. <laughs>